just got back from DEF CON, which was really awesome this year. Uh, actually, while I was leaving, I got to do something pretty cool at the airport there that I thought I'd kind of make a video around, which was using uh, TAR 1090 and uh, my War Dragon that I had on me with a Air Spy R2 to look at the traffic, aircraft traffic around and have it pulled into attack server and then displayed on an ATAC client. Uh, so I'm going to probably split this up into two and some of the stuff I've covered in previous videos we're going to take another look at it and we're going to tie it all together. So just to kind of explain the layout here the screen that I'm recording on right now is a uh, war dragon there's no reason you can't follow the directions to do this on any you know dragon OS setup uh, in fact I'm going to set up the tax server on another just a older desktop that I have laying around that I've installed the latest dragon OS to we're gonna use rust desk I'm gonna jump over to that desktop real quick and we'll go through setting the tax server up again the docker version and then once we get that set up, uh, we'll take a look at getting the, um, there's a particular branch of the flight view GUI, which really is just meant to help start and stop dockers. Uh, but there's a particular branch that will use the AirSpy R2. So bear with me, a little bit of jumping around, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get this up and running. So first we're going to jump over to the remote desktop of the uh, what we're going to set up is the TAC server. So just another desktop running Dragon OS. And you can uh, set up uh, SSH uh, if you want uh, to do that instead of, let's see. If you want to use SSH uh, in order to manage a remote, war uh, dragon or you know just in this case a regular dragon OS install I'm just pointing that out there we'll probably just stick to the remote desktop for now but you do need to install open SSH uh, server if you want to use SSH uh, let's see anyways while we got this open I'm here at a fork of the uh, tax server cloud RF tax server that uh, I maintain you can see it's really just up to date so Either or is uh, is fine. I'm gonna get clone this down onto my Dragon OS desktop. Now the TAC server. Uh, there's many different versions of TAC server. I just went the route of getting the open source. Uh, it does require just a normal uh, account created, and you can get access to the TAC server files here uh, from the uh, TAC.gov site. Particularly I grabbed the Docker 5.2 release, 500 and some megs, and I have that downloaded already. So let's uh, finish out the rest of this. I have a decent amount of RAM on this uh, desktop. Uh, let's see, so so we're in our attack server uh, uh, repository here. What I want to do is, uh, let's see, I'm going to move, I can download, uh, let's see, attack server. Basically, I'm just moving that uh, zip into the same directory as my setup is here. Now, I always forget, I think we need to use sudo scripts and that oh oh okay yeah sorry and because this is a normal just dragon os install here we actually need to get it set up with docker which right here oop let's see essentially trying to copy all of this
So this should get Docker set up. This is already taken care of on a War Dragon. So manage Docker as a non-root user. We should be able to let's see. Problem is I'm gonna have to log out, log back in. Uh all right, give me a second. Okay, I had to log out. And I'm logging back in now so that my user is added to the group. Uh, Docker, okay. All right, so we're added to the group Docker. I'm back into the remote uh, desktop. Change into tax server. I'm going to try this without sudo since I'm added now to the group. And we want to do setup.sh. So it's going to check, make sure the ports are available. It's going to complain that the uh, values do not match. That's fine. It's just not updated yet to reflect that uh, tax server 5.2. Just going to go ahead and say yes and yes. Give it a few seconds here. Now the other thing, notice there it's got that uh, IP address of the 122. Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. So I don't think we'll hurt anything if I kill it, but if we look at scripts and we look at the setup, the reason why I say this is because maybe you want it to run on any IP address. If we come down and we look right here, we could probably override this and just force it to, uh, right afterwards to use 0000, so it runs on any IP address. Because you notice IP right here and how it's pulling your IP. I'm just going to put a line right after it to kind of override that. See, we'll run it again. Okay, so there we go. Yep. And it's got eight gigs as the default for the memory. Now you can run this on the War Dragon itself if you wanted it to be a TAC server, uh, but you should probably lower the RAM because I think, yeah, the War Dragon by default right now, I think it's running eight gigs. I mean, of course you could upgrade it, but just keep that in mind. I'm running this on a desktop with a decent amount of RAM, so I'll leave that there. I'm just gonna use the defaults for the cert uh, creation. And so this is going to go through and set up the uh, dockers. Shouldn't take too long. I'll come right back when it's finished.
So now at this point it has created uh, certificates, two user certificates, an admin certificate, and this part here takes a little while. Um, it, it continues to, to loop and, and check if the, I think it's the database that needs to come up. So we'll give it, give it a little longer here. And looks like it's coming up. And now keep note of these passwords, the locations of the uh, certificates. And so what we should be able to do now is over in, let me think, TAC certs files. You'll see where you can get your admin cert and your user certs. We should all be owned uh, by the user here. So, okay. Now what we want to do is import the admin cert. And in Firefox, let's see, I think it's privacy security. Somewhere here. Certificates, view certificates. Your certificates, import. Let's see, let's go to our home directory. Tech, certs, files, and we'll do that. Admin P12, the uh, password by, by default. A tech, all lower class. A tech. Yep. Okay, so that imports in, and now we should be able to go to. Let's see, localhost eight four four three with an HTTP S on the front. We're going to accept the risk and continue and use our certificate. And we should be able to see our uh, tax server install. But every time for some reason, so the database configuration suggestion, you know, it'll always be like red for me the first time. And what I'll have to do is we'll look at the Docker's running with Docker PS, and particularly the uh, tax server database. I'll go uh, Docker. Let me think. Stop. Uh, let's see. Stop. We'll stop that one. And then we'll start it again. I've only had to do this the, the very first time and give it give it a little while let's see and I, I just refresh the page and everything seems fine now so you should have Oh, that's the other thing. So socket socket disconnected. Uh, we should actually change this zero 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 zero. Accept the risk. Okay. There we go. Okay. So socket socket connected. So we should have our tax server up and running. And at this point, I think we can continue on. I'll come back and I'll, um, let me think. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll stop here. I'm going to jump over and we'll set up the other piece, which is the Flight View GUI. And then in, a, in another video, I will come back and show how to tie both together. Now, I'm also doing this because I want to set up this uh, tax server. Uh, for a few videos to show what the War Dragon is uh, capable of doing, especially with a remote ID. I want to get back around to that. So this is a good foundation to have set up. All right, so let's see. I'm going to minimize this. So this is a, a War Dragon, but if you read the directions, 
you can set up Docker and everything else on a normal Dragon OS instance and do this, but I'm in the user source uh, flight view GUI on a War Dragon. And I have checked out the AirSpy ADSB branch. Okay. If you were doing this from scratch, you would just get cloned down this repository and uh, and either either use the, the main branch with RTL SDRs and all the other additional stuff, or you'd change over to the AirSpy ADSB branch. And from here, this is pretty easy. We'll do now keep in mind this GUI re requires a desktop environment I probably should look at making something headless or web-based uh, this was just something simple I threw together so we'll use uh, sudo you get a little GUI that pops up I already have the AirSpy R2 plugged in of course on the War Dragon and all you're gonna do is uh, really just take a look at the two tabs these lat and longitude is just random not my location but um, you need to put that in in a time zone for tar 1090 and if you start up uh, both of these so we'll start the ADSB service and we'll start the tar 1090 service that's pretty much it if you were to go to if you were to go to localhost 8078 you can see that you're getting aircraft on the screen so the air spy on the war dragon is working and you've got your tar 1090 to visualize everything and so in the next video what we'll take a look at is using uh, ADSB cot and a few other supporting applications to pull from the tar 1090 uh, information that you're getting on the screen here we're gonna change it to uh, cursory on target and we're gonna send it to our tax server I've tested it uh, on multicast it might just be my network for some reason I didn't get multicast uh, to my uh, Android tablet with ATAC I did get a direct UDP uh, using the IP address uh, but I for sure uh, got all the information to the tax server and then of course to my uh, Android tablet as a client of the tax server. So, anyways, that's uh, we'll we'll stop here and then uh, come back for uh, an, another video where I'll show the remaining uh, setup. All right, thank you.